Come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I'll be sharing a bit about how to play and reviewing Mariposas from AEG. So is the latest Elizabeth Hargrave design about to take flight? Or is this one that you can fly on past without worrying about? Well, you're going to find out right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, I will be sharing a little bit of a how to play as well as reviewing Mariposas in just a moment. But I do want to remind you, if you like this video, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ring that notification bell. It will not only let you know when I upload videos such as this, it'll also let you know when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. All right, as I mentioned, we're going to be diving into Mariposas, which is from AEG. It's designed by Elizabeth Hargrave, with artwork provided by Indie Maverick and Matt Paquette. Game is for two to five players, ages 14 and up. 14 and up because of the small pieces that are contained within the game. Does play in about 45 to 75 minutes does carry an MSRP of $49.99, or at least it will, when it arrives in stores on August 28th. So let's swing on over to the other camera because I've got Mariposa's kind of set up here at the table. We are going to kind of take a tour of the game itself. I'll explain how you play. It is rather simple to get into. I certainly do consider this to be a gateway game. It might look a little more complex than it actually is. So first off, the premise of Mariposas is that each of the players will control generations of butterflies that are attempting to traverse the Midwest and the East Coast of the United States out of Mexico, and then come back down with the final generation of butterflies back into Mexico, back down in here. So that is the premise of the game. There is set collecting involved. There's not, it might look like there's area control, but there's not area control going on. It is essentially, you're trying to collect sets and land in certain areas so that you can hatch new generations of butterflies. I will zoom in, we'll get a closer look at all of this in just a moment, but I'm going to kind of tour around, talk about the components. First off, component quality is top notch. All of the cards do have a bit of a linen finish to them, although I would recommend the smaller European size cards. You will want to sleeve these because you're going to shuffle these up quite a bit throughout the various uh, times you play. So you're going to see these get a lot of usage. These other smaller cards really don't get shuffled up. These are kind of bonus way station cards. And I'll kind of explain those in just a bit. Just like these cards here, these don't get shuffled. These are, once again, for set collecting for the various different way stations, which are marked on the board, they're effectively the way stations are cities. So I do want to mention, probably just want to get a pack of sleeves for these smaller cards here. So as we take a look around the map, you'll see we've got these hexes throughout, and we'll have these little icons on each of these. So what this basically means is if your butterfly lands on this space, any whatever space here, you're going to collect whatever token, whatever flower is being shown on that hex. 
once again, as I mentioned, there is set collecting going on in the game. Because in order for you to be able to hatch new generations of butterflies, for the most part, you're going to need to trade in sets of flowers you've collected and be located next to a uh, milkwood plant. So these are spread out all across the board as well. So we have an area here. We've got uh, our different season goals, which I should only have one card. But I did want to share that uh, we get a few different cards here. We're only going to use one for each of the seasons. So we've actually got five spring cards. We've got five fall cards. and We have 10 summer cards, but we're only going to use one per game. Also, if we take a look over here where we have these way station cards, we have these special effects as well. This is if you were to collect an entire set of these cards, then for an example here, you would take an extra turn at the end of fall. This will give you one victory point as well as your choice of a flower. If you collect all of these, you get that one point at the end of the game. And if you collected all of these, you would have an extra butterfly in Michoacan, which is Mexico, at the game's end. So it would count as an additional butterfly that you would return back to Mexico. We have a scoring track that winds down the board here as well. And then we also have a little info area here that shows that if you want to be able to hatch a second generation butterfly, you need to have two of the same flower or any three. If it was gonna be third generation, three of a kind or any four, fourth generation is going to be any four of a kind or five of any. And then fourth generation, which actually your fourth generation butterflies, you can flip over, they have will show two butterflies that you can do once again by the uh, five of any or four of a kind. So your, your hands are never tied that you can't possibly hatch butterflies because you don't have the correct sets collected. And that's very cool. I really do appreciate that. So as I was talking about these, these tiles, We've got a few of them as well. So each game is going to be different. So we're going to have different bonuses here for collecting these cards. And we will have different goals of the game for each season, each game as well. So really, really boosts that replayability. The, there's plenty of replayability already built into the game. There's just, it's just enhanced a lot by these changing goals and these changing bonuses. So everybody also will get a little container of butterflies. We're gonna zoom in, we'll get a closer look. And these little butterflies represent the different generations. There is a number on them as well. So we're gonna start off, everybody's gonna start off with their butterfly, their first generation butterfly in Mexico. So I've got this set where Let's say we've got five players playing the game. Everybody's going to get a couple of action cards. And in each round of the season, and we'll have four or turns, I should say, in each season. So in spring, we have four. So effectively, what that means is each of the players is going to get to play four cards. So the cards will essentially show different movement. There are various different cards that will give you kind of bonuses and let you duplicate other cards that have already been played as well. But for the most part, these cards are going to show different movement. So as an example here, this card is showing that I could move any one butterfly, four spaces, and collect the flower from not necessarily the space it lands in, which is normally what will happen, but I can collect the, the flower from any adjacent hex. This card, as an example, shows that I can take two butterflies 
and move each two. When I have a situation like this, when I have a card that shows this, I could actually use this on one butterfly. So I can move one butterfly two and land, and then move that same butterfly two again and land once again. So that's something to keep in mind, especially early on when you don't have a lot of butterflies out there, that you can always use these for the same butterfly. It's not, oh, well, you get to only move two and that's it because you only have the one butterfly. So you're gonna have two of these cards in your hand at any one time, and when it's your turn, you're gonna just play one of them. Move, do whatever you've done. When you've landed, you can take your flower. I'll talk about what happens when we land at a way station. And then you're just gonna draw another card, so you have two cards in your hand. Now, sometimes, these way stations will, sh will show like a special additional move, and that's when you actually take one of these cards here. So it might say, okay, well, you get to add a, a space to a move by one of your butterflies. This is adding two spaces to a move for one of your butterflies, and then this is a one butterfly moves two, one butterfly moves three. We also have... Butterflies that we're going to put on the season cards. Now, you may not be able to see this all that well, because I am zoomed pretty far out. But each of the players for the summer, they're going to have one second generation butterfly. And for fall, they're going to have two third generation butterflies. And what will happen is you have to, when you hatch your new generations, you have to take from the card first as opposed to out of your supply. Because once all these butterflies are gone, we'll actually reveal what the summer goal is. So usually you're gonna find out what the goal of the next season is before the season hits. So it allows you a little bit of planning, not a lot, but a little bit. And it's also to try to make sure that everybody kind of gets a chance to get more butterflies out there, newer generation butterflies out there. One cool aspect of the game as well is the fact that you'll learn something about monarch butterflies and the annual migration from Mexico up into the United States and then back again. No butterfly will actually make a round trip and survive, which is pretty amazing. Now, butterflies could, ha could hatch their fourth generation and make it back to Mexico. They would actually survive until the next season, the next year, for them to begin once again, but they won't survive. So most monarch butterflies, unless, you know, they're eaten or something happens, they can live seven or eight months. So that's pretty wild. I did not know that. So let's talk about the rules real quick. I'll show off the rule book and then we're going to zoom in and take a little closer look at the board and that. Everything is crystal clear as far as learning how to play the game, telling you what you get to do on your turn, talking about the way stations, talking about landing, talking about hatching, collecting flowers, and breeding. We do have some uh, different goals, as I was talking about the goal cards here. Kind of gives you a, a little more of an explanation. Talking about fall, this, this is kind of just breaking down everything right in front of you as far as the seasons, what you do when, when the season begins. Because as each season will begin, you're going to lose butterflies. So for an example, in the, uh, in the summer, you're going to remove all the Generation 2 butterflies. And uh, in the fall, you're going to remove all the... Um, Butterflies, I should say, from the goal cards. So your Generation 2 butterflies actually will die off. So at the end of the game, you should have Generation 3 and 4 butterflies out there. Talking about some of the season goals as well. Get some quick designer notes. And we get some information about the monarch butterflies. And the flight of the monarch north. American monarch butterflies make a massive migration journey of up to 3,000 miles. Amazing. And then on the back, we have a very 
easy to understand breakdown of what you do on your turn. Like I said, play a card, reproduce if you can, draw back up to two action cards. That's kind of the process here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And we are going to, whoops, that's zooming out there, Jeff. We want to zoom on in. Uh, let's see here. You know what? I think we should be okay if I just move over the, the way station board. So I've kind of explained what that is. Get a little better look here. Okay. So as an example, let's say I have, let's just grab a couple of these cards to start off with. One thing I should point out is uh, one aspect of the game is if you have the same action cards, then same exact ones, or if you have cards that duplicate a played action card, you can trade one or both of them in. So it's, it's just to make sure that you've got a little bit of variety of what you can do. So as an example, let's say, just so we can see this, I have my first generation butterfly has gotten here. So still, still looks like they're, they're still kind of in Mexico here. And these are the two cards I've got. So I can play this card, which allows me to move five spaces with this butterfly. So what I would maybe want to look to do is these way stations are very good because you're gonna you're not only going to get a flower for landing there, but you'll also be able to roll the flower die to see what kind of flower you get. You'll also be able to claim what is whatever is on this token here. So the first time you land in one of these way stations, you're going to flip that over. Now, that means that that's for every player. So I'll give you an example. Let's go five. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Let's see, how can we get up to a, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to go to Amarillo by playing this card. So we, we got to Amarillo by morning, right? All right, so I'm going to flip that over. Oh, so right there. It's gonna, so it's going to tell me that whenever anybody lands here, they're going to be able to take one of these bonus cards, right? See, it's plus two. That means this. This goes into my hand now. So I would actually have these two cards to hang on to. Now, once I play this, it's not going to go into the discards. It's just going to go back over to the way station board. But I would have this available to me to play in the future. I also get the roll. The flower die, which shows that I would get this flower. So this flower now goes into my collection. So let's use another example. Let's say that I got to Houston. Let's flip this over. Okay. So it's showing. It's uh, kind of a mauve color almost. So that's, that's an egg. So that means I get to collect this card. I get to collect this card from the PlayStation board. So if remember, if I collect sets of these colors, so there's four of them available, I get to get the bonus, whatever that bonus is, which in the game we're playing happens to be uh, a victory point at the end of the game, as well as my choice of one of the flowers. That's what happens when I collect four. These are also, each of these, they're, they're called life cycle cards because we have the seed, we've got the cat, caterpillar, we've got the chrysalis, and then we have the adult butterfly. Those are the four. And we've got green, blue, and this kind of mauve color. So each of these cards are actually worth a point at the end of the game. If I collect one of each, I get that bonus that we had took a look at before.
So just kind of give you an idea. So if I were to say have landed in Houston, I would get that card as well as roll that die. And that's whenever you first land in a way station. You get to take whatever is under here. Now, as an example, you can have more than one person. They're butterflies in a, in a location. There is no limit to how many butterflies can be in one spot, and every one of these players is going to receive that same reward the first time they land here. There is no blocking other players from landing on hexes or anything like that. This game, i got to be honest, you're really not going to be affecting the other players at all. This is, this is truly a Euro-style game where you're just doing your own thing. Your actions are not going to impact the other players, which is fine. Like I said, this is a, this is a gateway game. This is not a confrontational game. As far as I understand, I, I don't believe Elizabeth Hargrave designs confrontational games. I think I think they're pretty pretty kind of lighthearted overall. But I, I I gotta be honest, I have not played Wingspan. So I can't tell you, but I'm I'm pretty sure from the things I've heard about Wingspan, it is not a game that's confrontational, whatever. So another aspect I do want to point out, remember I was talking about the the milkwood plants here. So if you had, so let's say as an example here, I have, uh, let's get another one of these. Let's say I, I have two of these. I, let's say those are in my collection at this point. I've got two of these, and I land my first generation butterfly right there. Okay? So if I'm adjacent to this, that means I can hatch my next generation. So the first thing I would do is I would actually collect this flower from me landing there. And then I could spend my two, because remember, for a second generation, it's two of a kind or any three flowers would allow me to hatch my next generation. I have to take it from that gold card from summer and I would actually hatch it right on top of the butterfly I already have, my first generation. So kind of give you an idea what these goals look like. So this is this is the spring goal. So if at the end of spring I had North of Atlanta, which Atlanta is right there. So you kind of just kind of draw a line straight across, right? So if I have north of Atlanta, if I have a butterfly in the red and the butterfly in the orange, I would automatically get six points. Now, we also have Houston. Now, Houston's down here because we know we landed in Houston. So if I have a butterfly in yellow and blue, so we've got the blue here, we've got the yellow here, I would get six. So that, that is your goal. Now, we would know this right off the bat. So we would have revealed our spring goal right when the game starts. So... Everybody can pursue this goal. It's not a secret goal that only one player has. It's the other seasons that are secret until, remember, I had that sitting on top of there. Now, all the other players would have one of their second-generation butterflies on there, too. So we wouldn't even be able to find out what was going on in summer until either everybody had hatched their one of their second generation butterflies or summer arrived so kind of give you an idea here 
I'll give you an idea of one of the fall goals. There you go. So if uh, any butterfly that's north of Toronto, which is towards the top of the board, we'd get a point. And here we have north as well as east of Atlanta. Plus, keep in mind, we still want to bring back fourth generation butterflies. Let's look like that. Or if we hatch it again, look like that. They count as two, as two butterflies. We still want butterflies back in Mexico. So what you'll end up doing is you'll actually have some of your third generation butterflies still out because they haven't died out. And they'll actually be the ones that you're trying to finish up your fall goals with. While your fourth generation butterflies you're trying to get back down to Mexico because the more you have, the bigger your points are, your victory points are. And I mean, they can be huge. So as an example, if you had one, you only had one fourth generation butterfly back in Mexico at the end of fall, which is six turns, you'd get three points. If you have six back there, which is I know is asking a lot, but... If you had six fourth-generation butterflies back in Mexico, you'd get 24. So you want to make sure you're, you're scoring your goal points for fall if you can, but you do want to keep in mind you're really aiming at trying to get these fourth-generation butterflies back down to Mexico. So I'll pull back out a little bit. I'm going to zoom back out. I can just kind of show you. There we go. All right. So essentially what's going to happen is you're going to play your four turns. So you're effectively going to play four action cards. That's going to end your spring. Hopefully we've already revealed what summer is. And then any of your first generation butterflies will be removed from the board. So then you go into, go into summer. So when you go summer to fall, your second generation are actually uh, removed from the board. Let me double check something here. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Well, it's, yeah, okay, right. So at the end of spring, you remove your first generation. At the end of summer, you remove your second generation. I, I wanted to make sure I was phrasing it correctly, even though it's the same exact thing. So I wanted to take a look at the rules again because people will sit there and be like, oh, wait a second. You said at the beginning of summer you do this. It's actually at the end of spring, you know. Six one, half dozen to the other, right? So once you would finish up your season, you're going to see if you score any of the points for the goals for that season. You're going to discard all the cards that you've played because what you're going to do is when you play your, your action cards, leave them in front of you because then everybody knows whose turn is it and what round are you on. So we've got that, and then you're going to end up doing your scoring, and then you move on to your next season. So we've got spring, summer, fall. Once you've finished out six turns in fall, unless you have a bonus of an extra turn at the end of fall, then you're going to do your final goals for fall, and then you're going to score. Let's push this up a little bit. You're going to score down here for the butterflies you've brought back down into Mexico. And whoever's got the most points is the winner. And that, pretty much in a nutshell, is how you play Mariposas. So let's swing on over to the other camera. I will give you my final thoughts and a review score. So I, I got to say, 
being somebody who did not have an opportunity to play wingspan, I was pretty curious about Mariposa's, seeing it is from the same designer, and a lot of people really love wingspan. I am very impressed. I gotta say, the whole gang enjoyed playing this. Now, I'll be the first to point out, I have not played this with two players. I have played it with four and five players, and everybody enjoyed the fact that there, there was no take that in it. I, it's a game about butterflies traveling across North America and returning to Mexico. I think conflict and confrontation just doesn't fit the bill for that. So there's that. And everybody knows if you follow the gaming gang, I am a gamer. I enjoy take that in my games. I don't necessarily need it. So really, really enjoyed playing the game. Granted, there's luck involved. Some people aren't going to dig that because, you know, it is possible that your action cards you end up with aren't the greatest. You're, you know, you're landing on way stations and you're rolling your, your little flower die and you're not, you know, every time you turn around, it's costing you more flowers because you're not getting sets together. You don't collect the life cycle cards in a group, so you don't get the bonus. It, there's, there's some luck involved. Not a ton, but there is some luck involved. Uh, I also like the uh, I like the fact that if you're the last place player, you get to go first in the next season. Does it really change the scoring in that? Not necessarily, but you feel better, <laughs> right? You're not just sitting there like oh, I'm in last place and I get to go last. Oh. I think the component quality is really really nicely done. I like how it, the game is a little educational. I mean, I, I've learned some stuff about monarch butterflies that I never knew. I certainly did not know that they travel about 3,000 miles when they migrate. And I didn't realize that, that the butterflies who make it back into Mexico from North America will actually winter there and then leave to, you know, fly back to North America to start the process all over again in the spring, something else I didn't know. I didn't realize that they lived that long. I assumed, you know, once they hatch and once they become butterflies, a couple weeks or something, but I guess not. So all in all, I got to say, this is, just, this is just a lovely and pleasant game to play. I know it sounds odd coming out of my mouth, those words. But that's how I would describe it. This is a nice, relaxing game. People, you know, we, we found ourselves, because, you know, granted, this isn't even out yet. So we did squeeze in three plays uh, over the weekend. And it, it was, you know, people were, like, helping each other out, playing. Well, you know, hey, you're, you're doing that. What if you go over to this place here rather than where you're thinking? Hey, you know what? That's a pretty good idea. Everybody just had a really pleasant time. And if you didn't win, if you didn't have the most points, really wasn't that big a deal. We all had a really good time playing it. I think this makes for an excellent gateway game. I really do. And looking at the components and the cards and the tokens and all these different things will make this game look like it's more complex than it actually is. It is not complex whatsoever. It's essentially. Play your action card, land your, your little butterfly, get your flower, or get your bonus for the waypoint that you, your, the way station that you've landed at. Possibly hatch a new generation of butterflies. And that's kind of it. So, all in all, on a scale of 1 to 10, I give Mariposa's a very, very solid 9 out of 10. I enjoyed it that much. And uh, I think for most people, this will be a nice addition to their collection, especially if you're a family gamer, maybe you've got younger kids. Keep in mind, the 14 and up age range is just simply because of the small pieces. And, you know, in America, if there are little pieces into a, in a game, they have to mark it up as, you know, 14 and, or, or, and up or 13 and up. I could easily see 11-year-olds 
learning how to play this game and playing it well. So that is it for today's show. And want to remind everybody, if you like this video, please give it a quick thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you do subscribe, ring that little notification because it will not only let you know when I upload reviews and interviews and unboxings and first looks and page throughs and convention coverage when there are conventions. It'll also let you know when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs right here on YouTube, Monday through Thursday nights, where I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. All right, I will see you next time. And of course, as I've been closing out all my videos during this pandemic, unfortunately, allow me to remind you to please be smart and stay safe. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel by clicking right here. And of course, if you want to catch up on past episodes of The Daily Dope, check out this playlist. And if you'd like to see what YouTube's recommending you take a peek at from the channel, just give a click right over here. Of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. And once again, thank you very much for watching.